What up, everybody? You're now tuned into the true definition of a sports fanatic. I'm your host, Brandon Lampley. And yo, today we got to get into it, man. Dude, for all my sports fanatics out there, this past weekend, yo, this is one of the greatest weekends of football I have experienced in a little while because I love football, regardless of what level it's played on. But man, yo, Brian Boyd, yes, sir, let's go, let's get it. But man, dude, I was so I, I was so excited for this slate of games, and they did not disappoint. Top to bottom, this was an excellent product that the NFL put on. This is why the NFL is king. I'm telling you, football is number one, no matter the sport. NBA, they, they come a long way. They're nipping at the heels, of course. Uh, baseball is America's pastime. You got your hockey fans. You got your tennis fans. You got your golf fans. You got all of those fans. But football is number one for the re for this reason. This past weekend, playoff football is second to none because it's one and done. It's do or die. It's go hard or go home. You have to win. You have to win. There's no seven game series. There's no five game series. There's no play in games. There's no brackets. There's no tourneys. No, 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 no. It's win or go home. That's why football is king, people. That's why. So now let's get into it. And we have to start. We have to start with the Steelers. Got to start with the Steelers. Kurson, what's up, man? I know, hey, I know, I know Kurtzon was on cloud nine, y'all. Hey, I know Kurtzon was on cloud nine, man. Did, did you go to work today, Kurtzon? That's what I want to Did you go to work today? I know he was on cloud nine. But, y'all, I'm going to post a few groups real quick, so give me a second. But we're we going to start with the Steelers, people, because um, I called it. I called it, man. I told you, I called it. I called Big Ben. I call Big Ben, dude. You 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 can't tell me nothing else, dude. You can't tell me nothing else. I know what I see. Yo, I ain't got 2020 vision. Okay, I, I don't have 2020 vision. You know, my my left eye is, is worse than my right, and and I should be wearing glasses, of course. But I know what I see. Big Ben is done. Stick a fork in him. Yeah, I know you might have seen the. I think he finished with um 501 yards, something crazy like that. But yeah, yes, Kurson. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I forgot how much uh, I think he like he, he finished with a, a decent stat line or whatever, but he turned the ball over what four times. The fifth one wasn't his fault, of course. But I'm telling you, I know what I saw. So hold on. Let me let me finish sharing these groups and then we're going to get into this. Let's see, live sports. Uh, let's see. Are oh, we talking sports? There we go. Real deal. Uh huh. And so I got like one or two more, and then we on our way. Ah, right, let's talk under the tree. Yeah. All right, and I'll share it to the rest later. But yo, okay, so let's get into it. So. Big Ben and the Steelers, they were trending this way anyway. You had to have seen it. They were trending this way even while they were winning. I told you, they were one of the worst-looking 11-0 and teams I had ever seen. Like, if style points was a stat, the the Steelers would be 32nd in the league. I just I had to do – when I, when an 11-0 team rolls up to your house and you're not a good team, you expect that 11-0 team to mop the floor with said team. You do. You know, regardless if it's a divisional opponent or not, but that's that wasn't Pittsburgh. And yes, of course, they could not run the ball. Yes, you had injuries. Once Bud Dupree went out, teams could key in on uh, T.J. Watt. Uh, what you, uh, yeah, uh, Bush gone, Spillane gone. Do you, you, you lost a lot of guys. I get it. That defense was still good throughout the year, even with just putting in guys. Dude, they got they was they was picking up guys from the YMCA to play linebacker straight up, and they were still able to function. But with all of that said, Big Ben not being able to push the football down the field is why they will not win the title as long as he's still in Pittsburgh. The only way they can win the title with the way Big Ben currently is, is that you got to have a dominant running game 
and you got to have a top defense. See, most epic meltdown ever. Dude, I had never seen anything like that, man. Dude, yes. I had never seen anything like it. Dude, I'm sitting there and I'm watching it. I'm watching it with my mom. And she's just like, what is going on, Brady? What, what is happening? I'm like, I did some dude. It's so funny, man. You see a lot of people, they were talking. They was like, at this point, you got to reset the game. They had the arm, um, the little, when you play your Madden online and you blowing somebody out and you don't 21 scump them, they say your opponent has left the match. Your Pittsburgh had, dude, they, they left the match, especially early on. Now, it ended up being, what, an 11-point loss, but we know what it is. That game was over because all what, what, what the Browns did was once they got up, what, it was 35-7, they coasted. So they gave Ben everything he wanted underneath because that's all he can do is throw underneath now. He can't consistently push the ball down the field. So from now on, going forward, this is what you're going to get out of Ben Roethlisberger. Of course, he's going to flash old Ben from time to time. That's going to happen because he's he's a Hall of Fame quarterback. But with old age, it's not that you can't play anymore. It's that you cannot summon great performances week after week after week after week after week. You can't. Those bad performances are going to become more and more and more as time goes on. You look at Tom Brady this year. That was, that was the worst he's performed in stretches of games that I had ever seen. But he's cooking right now. We're going to get to that. So moving on from Big Ben. And the Browns are for real, man. The the the, the Browns, are, I think the Browns are for real. You say Cleveland trash. I don't think Cleveland is trash. They have a really good team, man. They do. That offensive line is good. They got great backs. You got decent receivers. Um, dude, Miles Garrett is a monster. You got a, you got a decent defense, you know, but of course, I don't pick them to uh beat the Chiefs at all. So I, I'm not even worried about that. Ben need to retire. Yeah, go ahead and give up the ghost. But he making it, hey, it's 30 million next year. You think Ben is gonna walk away from 30 million? I'd be very surprised if he walks away from 30 million. All these quarterbacks want to play into their 40s, and they're gonna die trying. Majority of them. The league is gonna have to kick out majority of these guys, I'm telling you, because uh 30 million dollars. Mm-mm. You get no, 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 no. But moving on, we got to talk about my man's the Lamar Jackson experience. I hear people talking about Lamar. Lamar has faced a ton of criticism, and you know sometimes it's warranted. You know with his play and um, his passing, but he's improved. Year after year after year after year. You see, the Browns are still the Browns, man. Yeah. Oh, and don't forget about Juju Smith Schuster. Oh, Juju Smith Schuster running his mouth. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Juju Smith Schuster running his mouth. It's the same old Browns. Mm -mm. Juju, you you haven't had a hundred yard game since AB left. I don't want to hear it. Don't want to hear it. Mm -mm. Don't want to hear it. Let's see. To my hell, I will play for 30 million. I'm 52. Hey, Leander, I'm out there. I do. I'm out there. I'm taking all hits. I do. I'm out there. 30 million, man. I'm, I'm going. I'm going, man. I'm going. The only thing I won't do for 30 million is get in the ring with Mike Tyson. You can't get me to do that. But to go play football, I'll go play football. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll go play football. Yeah, for sure. But back to Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson is great, people. You stop, stop overguessing this. Just because he's not the prototypical guy that you see week in and week out, he's not the six-five rocket arm quarterback that looked like sunshine. And he's un, he, his style is what you would call maybe unorthodox. Dude, he's still great. He's still great. And he's learning people. Lamar Jackson is 24 years old. Just go look at his resume. Go look at his resume. He's been to the playoffs three straight seasons. He's a former MVP, back-to-back 1,000-yard rusher, first to ever do that. There's been, I think, six 100-yard rushing games by quarterbacks in, in NFL history in the playoffs. Uh, Kaepernick has two, and Lamar has two. Lamar is great. Don't overthink it. The Baltimore lacks receivers. Hollywood Brown has came on late, but they lack receivers. Better watch out for Buffalo. Oh, Leander, Buffalo got a stick, man. Anybody better watch out for Buffalo. Only ones, oh, Buffalo can beat everybody except the Chiefs right now, in my mind. 
That's how I see them. That's how they're built. They, they're built to beat everybody except the Chiefs right now. So anybody going up against Buffalo, um, be ready. Be ready for a tough physical game. I'm going to do my picks later on, and we're going to get into that. You're going to be surprised about some of my picks. I did go 4-2, though, by the way. The two upsets, though, the Seahawks. Come, come on, man. Russell, we got to talk about it, too. Uh, Shannon Sharp brought it up, and I was listening to him. He said, Russell Wilson has to prove – that he can win without the Legion of Boom. That's a real thing because he hasn't won since. And it's not like the defense has been God awful. Like green Bay's defense has been for Aaron Rodgers for years. No, he's had, he's had defenses where they've kept them in the game and Russ has not played well in the playoffs. It's time to talk about it. You're going to criticize a quarterback. You're going to criticize Lamar. You're going to criticize Baker Mayfield. You're going to criticize Big Ben. He's getting old. You got to talk about Russell Wilson struggling in the playoffs. I see nobody can convince me Lamar trash. Like you said, he's still learning. Plus, he's young. If the man leads his team this year to the Super Bowl or even the AFC Championship, I'm cool with that. He's literally getting better every year. He just needs more weapons like the Chiefs, more players to throw to than just Brown and Snead. Shoot, not even Snead, dude. It's Mark Andrews and or Bus. Because even with um, how well Hollywood Brown has played the last couple of weeks, he's still been inconsistent, and he could still lay an egg against Buffalo. Mark Andrews is your only sure thing in the passing game. And you name, come on, man. And Lamar's putting up great numbers with a tight end as his main threat and really no outside threats that's consistent. Come on, man. The man is great, man. Cut, cut it out, man. Cut it out. But and what point was I on? Well, I was talking about Lamar. But um, when you think about Baltimore right now, Baltimore is built. It, it, they, the, the way they're built is very scary because they can win the Super Bowl just like this. I think so. I think so. And the Chiefs are their only the only real threat, I think, to them that I think can beat them right now from what I saw against Tennessee. Because let's keep it plain. Tennessee had a top five offense i don't think you understand how good tennessee was this year on offense it wasn't just derrick henry i ain't gonna lie i poo poo Tannehill a lot i did i, I did i poo poo Tannehill, but i have to give it to him Tannehill was a top quarterback this season and they made him look pedestrian that's what the baltimore defense did to him and with with calais campbell and brandon williams on the defensive line with the ravens that is an entirely different defense with those guys on the line, especially when it comes to stopping the run. Calais Campbell is one of the best run-stopping defensive ends in the league, and he can get you 10 sacks. Brandon Williams, one of the best run-stopping D tackles in the league. I'm just saying, man. I'm just saying. But Lamar Jackson is great. Stop stop, stop playing with my guy, man. Stop playing with Lamar. Cut that out, man. I, I, I'm sick of it. And just, he, yeah, he's not the prototypical. And to my, you, a lot of people talking about they haven't seen running quarterbacks win the Super Bowl and then kill that noise. Lamar Jackson is a quarterback. He's not just a running quarterback. And he's fast, man. That, that speed, I understand Tyreek Hill is probably the fastest player in the league. There's a lot of guys who would argue with that. But when it comes to speed, Lamar Jackson has what you call next man speed. Watching uh, Michael Vick talk about Lamar. Michael Vick had a great burst he didn't have great long speed if you watch michael vick those first 10 to 15 yards he's out he's out racing anybody but once it gets to 30 yards 40 yards 50 yards he didn't have long speed like he had his burst lamar has gear son he hit he, he hit he hit first gear he got out of the pocket and second gear then third gear and fourth gear dude with no safety he had three dbs chasing him and none of those guys are slow for tennessee people None. Adoree Jackson is a track star. And Lamar Jackson makes them look pedestrian. The man is great. Cut it out. So let's move on. Do a little review. I guess um, Colts Bills. Uh, Colts Bills was a good game. Um, Josh Allen. Yeah, I told you I had to eat crow on Josh Allen. I had to eat crow on Josh Allen. Josh Allen is good, man. I had to eat crow on him. Josh Allen, uh, without if it wasn't for um, uh, Aaron Rodgers going God mode this year, Josh Allen might be MVP. He's been that good. And Buffalo is tough, man. They got an absolute stick up there. 
Um, I just I can't I can't wait for this weekend of games, man. I'm so excited. Spoke straight facts. Appreciate that. Yo, um, but uh Buffalo, see Saints Saints Bears went how I thought it would go. Um, Bucks Washington went how I thought it would go. Um, Taylor, Taylor Heineke can play. I don't know what Washington's plans to do with Taylor, but Taylor Heineke can play, man. That kid can play. I'm trying to tell you he can play. Uh Rams, Seahawks talked about Russell. That that see that Rams defense is absolutely stunning. The Rams defense reminds me of just about any great defense that we I've, I've seen, man. They got they have it all outside of probably them in Baltimore right now. Um, when it comes to the eye test, not just the stats and the yards given up and turnovers and sacks and things like that. When it comes to the eye test, the Rams defense and the Ravens defense are the two top defenses in the league. I'm telling you, those guys are great. And, of course, the Rams have Aaron Donald, which is probably the best defensive lineman to ever play the game. When it's all said and done, he's probably going to be the best defensive lineman to ever play the game. Yes. And, of course, they got my man Jalen Ramsey out there. But um, Russell Wilson, dude, you got you to gotta start talking about it, like I said. See, speak on that Pittsburgh first play. Oh, dude, I, t- I talked about it. I talked about it. That was just, dude, that was a bad. This, you know, it's the, the, the snap from the center. It happens from time to time. You don't see it in professionals all that often. You see it in college, and you'll see it in high school and on lower levels. But, you know, that those are things that you just – you know, you just don't see that often. But I will say it was hilarious watching uh, Ben Roethlisberger and James Conner chase the football before it went into the end zone and then them trying to uh, jump on it like it was a greased pig. I'm like, dude, pick up the football to fall on it. What are you two doing? You got they looking back to see if somebody's coming back. No, get on the football. Don't worry about it. But anyway. So, um, see, let's go into. Oh. So I went four and two, um, but we're going to get into these picks this upcoming weekend. So divisional round, you got the Rams at the Packers. So Rams and Packers is interesting, and I almost want to pick the Rams. I'm telling you, this is a tough, tough matchup for the Packers. This isn't a gimme for the Packers. You know why? I'm going to tell you why this isn't a gimme for the Packers. The defense for the Rams is great. Jalen Ramsey on Devontae Adams and even Darius Williams, the other corner, they're going to be shadowing uh, Devontae Adams. And these guys are great. Aaron Donald in that defensive line, especially if Aaron Donald is healthy, they're going to be able to get pressure on, um, on Aaron Rodgers. So right there, that matchup, those two almost cancel each other out with, all, with uh, Green Bay's offense being so great. And then the Rams defense being as great as they are. Now, what it's going to come down to is Jared Goff and this offense against this Packers defense. Now, if the Packers can get a lead, it could get ugly because Jared Goff can't do. He can't throw the football right now. Jared Goff looks terrible right now. Appreciate that, Dwight. Rams got that defensive lockdown DBU. Yeah, dude, their, their DBs are great but i'm telling you them the jared golf versus this packers defense they have to run the football if they can run the football and they can keep this game close it might be something to see up in green bay but i'm taking green bay to beat the rams taking green bay next up is the ravens at the bills taking the ravens I'm sorry. I got to go with Lamar Jackson. I think Lamar Jackson is going to be able to get it done against this Bills defense. It's going to be a close, hard fought game. It is. Josh Allen is great. He He's great. And he has wide receivers, unlike Lamar. So it's going to be a very, very tough, hard fought game. But the, the Ravens defense is going to keep Lamar in just about any game that he plays. And Lamar is going to make enough plays to win that game. I got the Ravens over the Bills. Lock. Lock it up. Lock it up. So Browns at Chiefs. Browns at Chiefs are interesting, but let's not get cute. Let's not 
you know, let, let's not talk about hyperbole. Let, let, let's not overthink it. Of course, the Chiefs are great. The Chiefs should repeat as Super Bowl champions. Uh, they are my Super Bowl pick. They should beat the Browns. Um, and, um, I think they play Sunday. Yeah, they play Sunday. Chiefs should beat the Browns. But, but Browns should be able to score. This isn't going to be a walk in the park for Kansas City. No, no, sir. This will not be a walk in the park for Kansas City. This game will be a tough game for Kansas City. But I got faith in Andy Reid. I got faith in Patrick Mahomes. They will pull out this game in Kansas City. Next up, got the Bucks and the Saints. And I'm not going to lie to you, man. The Saints are on upset alert. They are. Because it's hard to beat a team three straight times. It is. It's hard. It's hard to beat a team three straight times, people. Now, it's happened, um, I think of some, I think of 14 and 8. So the teams that have beaten a team three straight times, they beat them two times before when they played the third game. That team is 14 and 8. So historically, that team should win. So historically, the Saints should win. But we're talking about Tom Brady. We're talking about Tom Brady, people. See, KC defense shaky at best. They're inconsistent, man. They're not what they were last year, but Patrick Mahomes and that offense can put up basketball numbers on, on you, and they could do it in a quarter, seem like, and put up three, four touchdowns in a quarter. So their defense, all the all their defense has to be is opportunistic. If you're the Chiefs, all you want from your defense is op for them to be opportunistic and to get turnovers. That's all you need. All you need is about two turnovers. If the Chiefs defense can get two turnovers, Chiefs win majority of their games they play because Patrick Mahomes in that offense is great. And they showed you what happened. Even with them down three touchdowns, they showed you what could happen. Scored seven straight times or something crazy like that. But back, uh, Buck Saints. Um, the Saints should win this game. This should be a easy win for the Saints. It should. They should beat them because that's what it's been. That's the narrative. That's what's happened two previous times. That's what it should be. But I don't know, man. I don't know. The Bucks are cooking right now. Antonio Brown looks like A.B. from Pittsburgh. He has his burst back. He looks good. He has unlocked potential for this offense and what you thought it could be once they got him. I think they're rounding in the form, and that's what they're going. That's what it's going to be, because Byron Leftwich and Bruce Arians is going to figure out a way to protect Tom Brady. They have to. They're going to figure out a way to protect Tom Brady, whether it's keeping extra linemen in, making them eligible, um, and basically playing tight end, or whether it's keeping in Gronk to protect so Brady can get the ball to those receivers with, with Godwin, Evans, and AB. Dude, it, it's. It, it's going to be interesting, I'm telling you. But I'm taking the Saints to win the game because I think the Saints are going to win. I think Drew Brees is going to give them just enough to be able to win this game. Alvin Kamara is going to give them enough to win this game. And the Saints defense is going to be opportunistic. And they play well against that old, the uh, Bucks O-line. They do. They play well against the Bucks O-line. So we will see. And the, the Bucs defense, the Bucs defense, a defense that I thought was one of the best in the league, they got some cracks, man. They leaking oil right now. They're, they are. They're leaking oil right now. Tyler Taylor uh, Heineke can play. Yes, he can. But how much of that, I want to know how much of that was really the Bucs defense. The Bucs defense wasn't that great. And Tyler Heineke put up, what, 300 yards, um, a touchdown, and I think he rushed for um uh by, by 50 60 yards something crazy like that he almost put up 400 total yards offense against the bucks defense so what do you think Bre uh breeze and this offense with kamara michael and they got michael thomas back what do you think they're going to do to this bucks defense they better get it together i'm telling you man they better get it together <laughs> so moving on oh the news today doug peterson out in philly I saw it coming because from the narrative and everything, what everybody talked about, um, the bizarre decision to, to bench Hurts and bring in Sudfield um, from players in the locker room talking against them, um, other pundits in Philly talking about it. 
Um, I knew he was pretty much on his way out. But I will say this, though, about Doug Peterson being out. You could have a worse resume than Doug Peterson right now if you're a coach. I mean, because Doug Peterson's resume right now, what he did for Philly, yeah, he should live in infamy in Philly. Even though it ended the way it ended, be thankful for Doug Peterson. Be thankful. That's your Super Bowl winning coach. He brought a championship to Philadelphia, something that no one before him has done. So he deserves that respect. Now, this and this lead because and it's not like they've been a perennial loser since the Super Bowl either. But this lets me know that this is more than just on the field with Doug Peterson being out in Philadelphia. It's more than just on the field. This has something to do with ownership, um, players in the locker room, who, whoever the I would say the leaders in the locker room, the captains and all those guys probably didn't want him back for whatever reason, you know. And it'll come out eventually what was going on behind the scenes because, you know, people snitch. It is what it is. And we'll find out sooner or later. But it's more than just on the field, because if we're going by just on the field, Doug Peterson is a great head coach. If we're going by just what's been happening on the field, Carson Wentz was, has been terrible. And I don't care what anybody say. It ain't Doug Peterson's fault that Carson Wentz was what he was. He is what he is because of Carson Wentz, man. It ain't Doug Peterson. It's Carson Wentz. But he's out in Philly, and they're going to be looking for a coach. I think that's a great landing spot for Eric Bieniemy. I'm, I'm ready for Eric Bieniemy, the OC for the Chiefs, to get his shot, man. He deserves that shot. He's been interviewed I don't know how many times, and nobody's taking a chance on him. I wanted him here in Jacksonville, but the fix was in because it was already it's already been known that uh, Shot Khan has a relationship with Urban Meyer. So that the fix was in on that. And I don't like that, but hey, it is what it is. It's his team. You do what you want with it. But um, the fact that Eric Bieniemy did not get an interview in Houston, and that's why your star quarterback looks like he wants out of Houston, that speaks volumes, people. It does. And that segues into my last topic before I go into. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead and get it. Get a good snapshot of that right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before we get into that, um, let's talk about Deshaun Watson. So what would you do if you were the Jaguars and you have a chance to go get Deshaun Watson? And, of course, you're going to give them Trevor Lawrence, which is the first pick. Do you do it? Do you roll the dice on Trevor Lawrence or do you go get a sure thing? Deshaun Watson is gold bars. He's he he's he's Bitcoin. He's he's crypto. He he's he he's great. He's one of the top quarterbacks in the league. Top. He's top five and he's not five. He's not. So do you go get him or do you roll the dice on Trevor Lawrence? What do you do? Me personally, I was talking with my homeboy Chris about it. And me and him were talking and we came to the consensus that I would take Trevor Lawrence. I would roll the dice on Trevor Lawrence for a couple of different reasons. Number one, one of the reasons I would roll the dice on Trevor is because I think Trevor is going to be great. I think he's going to be great. I think so. And, you know, do I have faith that they're going to do the right thing, surround him with the proper people, get him the right coach and put talent around him? If you go get Urban Meyer, yeah, I, I feel that. You go get the right GM, yeah, I do feel that. Um, also, his contract. Trevor's going to be making peanuts for five years. So you can build a winner around him like the Kansas City Chiefs. Patrick made peanuts for a couple of seasons and they were able to pay guys and and build that team. You can do the same here in Jacksonville. So that's why I would I would roll the dice on Trevor instead of going to get Deshaun Watson, even though I love Deshaun Watson, even though I think he's the a top five quarterback, even though I think he's great, even though I think he's elite. I will roll the dice on Trevor Lawrence and build around him. And it's a pipe dream anyway, because you got to be smoking all kinds of dope to trade your franchise quarterback in the division. It's not happening. If that was the case, Baltimore would have got DeAndre Hopkins. You don't trade star players within the division or within his own conference. Mm -mm, Ship him out west somewhere um, in the desert like they did DeAndre Hopkins. No. The only, the team, only teams that got a shot at getting Deshaun right now are NFC teams. He's not going within the AFC. You can book that if he if he is get gets his way out of Houston. 
I'm telling you, mm -mm, not happening. But we're going to finish it up with this Alabama and Ohio State. I am ready for the game tonight. Alabama's going to win. Let's see. You see, it's like they're fatigued. Oh, I need to see you, Caleb. My bad. Uh, see, we got some of the best numbers for our rookies. Dude, we have Jakar. I seen it. Um, we probably had we our rookies scored the most touchdowns in the league. Um, we got some great play out of our rookies, man. We were a young team, and they did that for a reason. Um, but dude, we we have something to build on. It's just not complete crap here. There are some things to build on. There are some pieces to build on, and you're gonna you're going to be able to add pieces because we got the most um, one of the best cap situations in the entire league. And that's nothing about Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is almost in cap hell. They got 17 free agents coming up. They ain't gonna be able to re-sign everybody. So you're gonna get weaker, and your quarterback is gonna continue to age. It's not a good recipe in Pittsburgh, people. But on to Alabama, who's going to win the national title. Now, I love, I love my Jacksonville kids. Any kid that came from Jacksonville and he's playing a professional sport. I root for him, no matter what team he plays for. Hey, I love him. Hey, that's Derrick Henry. You know, it's Yuli, but it's kind of basically Jacksonville. I root for Derrick Henry, even though he played for the Titans. Yeah, and I wonder what Derrick is. I, 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 I wonder where uh, Mr. Derrick Turner is. Uh, no, not Derrick Turner. David Turner, my bad. David Turner. Think about Derrick Henry. Mr. David Turner. I, I see that he's not in our chat today, our resident Titans fan who's a troll. He said, all we need is a leader on both sides. Yeah. And how great would we be if we had a kept Yannick and Jalen Ramsey coming up this offseason? Anyway, I won't talk about it because I might start crying right now on live. Anyway, but I love all my Jacksonville kids. And I say that to say this. I love you, Sean Wade, the corner from Ohio State. But he said he wants Devontae Smith. He wants the Heisman winner. He, want, he thinks he's Jalen Ramsey. He wants to be able to lock up Devontae Smith. Sean, Sean, I like you. I hope the Jaguars draft you. I hope you have a great NFL career. But you are not. You uh, There's no way on God's green earth are you going to be able to lock up Devontae Smith tonight. It's not happening. No, that's not happening. Devontae Smith will have a game. Najee Harris will have a game. Mac Jones will have a game. And it's going to be an unsung hero on offense because all those guys are going to play well, but another guy is going to get his tonight. See, no smoke, no smoke. Dude, Sean Wade don't want that smoke, man. And I look, dude, Jacksonville kid, I want him to do well, but you don't want that smoke with Devontae Smith tonight, man. I like, dude, hey, Chase Young called out Brady. He wanted all that smoke, didn't he? Come on now. Come on. Let, come on. Let's talk about it now. Come on. But Ohio State is a dangerous, dangerous opponent. I'm not as confident as I seem and look right now talking to you about this game and how this game is going to go because Justin Fields, he scares me. Justin Fields scares me. Justin Fields is the prototypical quarterback that gives Nick Saban defenses fits. He is. They're going to give us fits. Sermon plays into our hands as far as running backs that Bama faces and they were able to play well against. It's the shifty Sony Michelle kind of speedsters that give Bama issues, not the power bruisers. And Sermon has a little bit of wiggle, but he's a bruiser. See, yes, OSU is very explosive. Dude, um, Patrick Sertain, who I think is the top deep, top cornerback in the draft coming out, I hope he ate his Wheaties. I hope he's in the locker room right now eating his Wheaties because Olave is a problem. Olave is going to give him all he can handle tonight. So I hope Patrick Sertain is ready because Justin Fields and Olave have a connection. Come on, they, they, that's peanut butter and jelly right there, man. So they have to be ready. Ohio State is going to score points on this Alabama defense. They're going to score. This, I, man, if this is a low-scoring game – 
if the if this if the total isn't over 60, I'm going to be shocked. I'm going to be shocked because both offenses can score. It's what which defense is going to be the most opportunistic, which defense is going to get the turnovers, which defense is going to get timely stops, which defense is going to force field goals and stop touchdowns. Which one is it going to be? Is it going to be Bama? Is it going to be Ohio State? Because that's going to be the winner because we know what these offenses are going to be able to do. That is clear what they're going to be able to do. Better contain sermon. Oh, dude, I, I talked about it. He played, I told you, he, he plays into the hands of what Bama likes to do as far as him being a power back and him not. He, he is shifty some, but um, I am, he does scare me because he can get loose, man. He absolutely can get loose. But that, oh, that whole OSU offense, man, Ohio State is scary. But Alabama's going to win. See, Saban can't control the clock with Harris. He should bleed OSU. Yeah. Yeah. If if I'm if I'm Alabama tonight, I don't necessarily get away from what I do best, um, which is get the ball to Devontae Smith and these receivers down the field. Yes, that is what I want to do. But tonight, Najee Harris has to cook. If Najee, if Najee Harris can cook and that's let's see, I want Najee Harris to get 30 touches tonight. See, 25 rushing five receptions that's what i want 25 rushes five receptions you got to get that from Najee harris and he has to cook tonight because that's going to slow the game down if you're able to slow the game down and not make it a track meet then it it, it plays into the hands i think of alabama i don't think it plays in the hands of ohio state because ohio state with them they they want to track me ohio state wants to track me they do because your boy, they can score. Dude, Justin Fields, his leg with his legs and his arms, they can score. Let's see. Hold on. Oh, okay. So, but with that said, it's road tied all day. See, Fields can be a choke hazard too. His stock is on the line tonight. You know, and it shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't be that way. And I hate that. They doing that to Trevor right now. And I, I don't like that because if a guy can play, he can play. I mean, you don't can't be a prisoner of the moment. If you're a franchise and Justin Fields is your guy right now, regardless of how he plays in this game, he should be your guy tomorrow. Don't don't overthink it. Don't overdo it, man. Don't overthink it and don't overdo it. I'm telling you. But anyway, um, I think I covered all my topics. I appreciate y'all guys for tuning in. You know. This was a excellent, excellent weekend for football, man. It's it almost you almost forget that Alabama plays tonight because the games were so electric, man. Playoff football is second to none, man. You get chills, man. You get the goosebumps uh, with playoff football because every big play leaves you uh, breathless, man. It, it it leaves you leaves you in the state of euphoria. I mean, Lamar Jackson's fifty eight yard run is probably the greatest run. I've seen by a quarterback ever. And I saw Michael Vick against Minnesota in his overtime run to beat them. That run by Lamar is was absolutely amazing. If you haven't seen that run by Lamar, and if you're a sports, and sports fan, even a casual fan, you had to have seen it. Go check out that run by Lamar. But, man, foot, this is why we love football. This is why the true definition of a sports fanatic exists. This is why football is king, man. And we, next week, that, that slate of games is going to be great. Uh, we're going to have pretty probably great AFC champions, AFC and NFC championship games, and it's going to be a great Super Bowl. Let's see. The boat has some good runs. Let's see the boat. But, um, it's going to be some good games, man. Football, football is where it's at, man. Football is just it just. It does it for me, man. You get the chills, man. It's like listening to Ray Lewis talk about big hits. He said the way the big hit changes the game. It just, it just, it just changes everything, man. It's just the whole fabric of it. It, 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 it changes a lot. See, Bortles. Oh, I thought you were talking about Bortles. Well, yeah, we know Bortles had some good runs, but you know he's not electric like Lamar, man. You know, come on, come on with that. But I appreciate it, people. Um, 
I'll talk to y'all later. I've um, got some more stuff coming out, um, more videos. I'm going to be doing more on my podcast. Um, I'm going to dust that off. And I'm, I'm just trying to pump out this content, man. So, um, and it's going to be more than sports. I told you, um, I got, um, some relationship stuff coming up. Um, probably some celebrity gossip stuff coming up, man. I'm trying to round all the bases cause I'm not just a sports guy. I can do it all, man. So, and anybody who wants to come on, I told you, you, you want to come on here. You want to talk. Hey, you're more than welcome. Just hit me up and I got you. Hey, you come talk to me, man. And I don't bite, man. This is we can do a debate style. It's no thing. I'm not here to make people look stupid. I'm not here to talk trash to people like that. That's not my game. What I am here to do is 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 basically I want to make it like a conversation between friends. Two sports fanatics talking about sports, man. We ain't got to get crazy with it, man. You know, we're going to have fun. But until next time, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.